The year is 1992. Julio Cesar Chavez is in what seems to be the undeniable prime of his life and career, as he boasts a shining record of 81 and zero, and with nine defenses of his WBC light welterweight title after making many defenses of his belt in the lightweight and super featherweight divisions just a couple of years prior, many were scared to even reference this Goliath among gods of the ring, let alone challenge him. And next up on Chavez's run to become a centurion without a loss was another great Hector Macho Camacho, a three-weight world champion from Puerto Rico with blinding speed and a gas tank that would keep a Lamborghini sweet until the end of time. Puerto Rico and Mexico were far from strangers in boxing and had created some of the greatest rivalries of the last 30 years. But would this fight be able to match that greatness or even exceed it? The talent was undeniably there, but now we needed the proof. Welcome back to Boxing After Dark. Tonight, we're looking at a critical fight in two undeniable Kings of the Rings records and witnessing a reality check of the level of both warriors and what path they were being led down professionally. Let's get into it. Julio Cesar Chavez's record had been something of considerable debate in 1992. Despite being a two-weight world champion, it was undeniable that his first 50 victories had all been against opponents from his home country, with records ranging from middling to mild, but to most, it was confirmed he was as great as the boxing fans and reporters warned when he made his way to the United States, bowling out massive threats like Ruben Castillo, Roger Mayweather, Rocky Lockridge and Meldrick Taylor with iconic knockouts and mostly impressive showings. Chavez, unloading. Chavez was regarded as the best pound for pound fighter in the world, but more than that, he was regarded as the toughest son of a in boxing. He articulated all the virtues that Mexican fighters are supposed to have. But with hype comes fear, and with fear comes danger. And if there's one word that sums up the macho man, it's dangerous. Being quick as a cat and venomous as a snake in close quarters, it wasn't impossible to picture Chavez being outworked and outperformed by his next opponent. We ran out there with the two best in the world. You know, I'm the flashy, dashy, good-looking macho man sensation. And he's the great sensation in my Mexican. Undefeated, I'm undefeated. It's a fight that anybody wants. Hector refused to let his prize be snatched from him. And seeing how he disposed of legends like Vinny Paz, Ray Mancini, and Edward Rosario only backed up his ideology. Camacho was coming for Chavez whether he liked it or not, and no excuse, injury, or problem would get in the way. Are you surprised at how, how much hype has gone on about this fight? It sold out in two weeks, 19,000 seats in two weeks. The greatest thing any promoter can ever say is that the sign says sold out. Out. Fight night arrived on the 12th of September in 1992. As the two North American countries rallied and roused over the prospect of their fighter achieving their greatest career victory thus far, the light welterweight champion made his way to the ring. Camacho follows closely behind. And as the fighters are proposed to touch gloves, a shadow of confidence creeps across Chavez's demeanor. The bell rings and the fight begins. This bout was way overdue. There's the opening bell. And here we go. Mexican people would never forgive him if he lost this fight. Three times Hector fighting on nerves right now. Very difficult, but intends to slowly but surely. Don't you find it a little odd that Wendy is the third man in the rank? He knows he lost to Greg Haugen. Pillar to boast. Yes. And he is holding every once in a while and really unloads. He's and he but does Camacho have Chavez as we're seeing? that Chavez is throwing is going to be key. Well, Ms. Camacho is fighting a purely defensive fight. Every move he makes is going for low blows from Chavez. See, something that Chavez is also doing. And Camacho gets offended. Fighter Chavez has fought new out of scheduled for 12 for the WBC Super Lightweight Championship. Up and moving. There's a left hand by Camacho. Well, I don't Chavez. Oh, he landed with the right to Chavez. More accurately. It's the economy. It's round four now. Camacho comes out winging. He just can't run. But Chavez has him against the ropes. Trouble. 
damage, especially if he catches Chavez, maybe a little over anxious running into a shot. Some combinations. Oh, oh snappy right once again, a wicked right hand. Dishes. A la Rocky Marciano. He told us he would start off faster. Oh, a left uppercut by Camacho that got through. Chavez, in 81 pro fights, has never been knocked down. Well, like an invitation here, I was. Combination and a great finish by Camacho there at the belt. He, he can't get this guy in the corner, he can't keep him here. That's, be, that's because he's not running as much. Not to chase him. That was a nifty left hand, a straight lid in the belly there by Chavez. He goes to the body again. Fairly new to Julio Cesar. And we're speaking of Camacho in that case. Round six, scheduled for 12. Angles in so many punches, you cannot block everything. Body shots by Chavez. Camacho can win a round. If Richard Steele takes away a point from Julio Cesar Chavez, he better not leave this building. <laughs> or the phrase systematic dismantling comes from Camacho. Yeah. Camacho okay. taking a lot of punches. Have the look on Camacho's face like. Uh-oh, I don't know what to do with this guy. Barrage of punches being administered by Chavez. Oh! Combination by Chavez. Dollars in merchandising this weekend, 50 million. Would this fight have made more sense two or three years ago when both were really at their physical peak? Is Camacho Punch worthy of fighting Punch Chavez right now? A lot, and that playment, that playing that he did is evident right now in the fight. It's, he's not trying. Much that he has now gotten so right. defensive he can't even. Gloves are made for punchers. Oh, boy, that side is going to be sore tomorrow morning. Oh, still trying to get him to fight his way out, trying to keep. He has to gain his respect, and right now he's point away from him. Kill him up, kill him up. Oh, he's really getting hurt now. Punch away out, punch away out. He is getting hurt. Camacho looking to try anything in that eye, really. That left eye of Camacho. Deal with him, just don't hit me on the side anymore. He is in a survival mode. Yeah, what we're looking at is the beginning of the end. This lopsided affair continues. It's the beginning of the end, and that's what's happening. A blistering attack by Chavez. It could be near the end. Richard Steele looking in intently. Holding break. And the and clutching and grabbing continues. Guys, he's not gonna do much better with one. Two words, all Chavez. Camacho is just taking a beating. Camacho, though, is punching back. Camacho trying to fight back. Oh, man. Another shot by Chavez. Give him a beating. Didn't just want to knock him out. And that's what he's getting now, a beating. Well, Chavez now is just waiting on him to load up. He wants to do damage now. You wonder if Camacho can even see. What's a hit? At least he's fighting if he's going to go. Camacho's fighting better here than when he was in, when he was fresh with his good eye. Camacho's fighting like this is his last round. He's going to give it just to get anything going, but he has no strength left. Those blasts to no, the arms no, no, have no. taken the punch. Oh, it's about over. Camacho just going for broke. His left eye all but shut. His no, right no. eye cut now. Round 10. Again, the last time Chavez went all the way was September 14th, 1991. After that last round, how could it get any worse? Unbelievable fury. And that's what's happening here. A little cut on, on almost the... Uh... No let up from Chavez. Might be a slight cut over the right eye of uh, Chavez. They're working on it. Here goes Chavez working on the body of Camacho. I wonder how many times Camacho has on, been punched. On could there be... Since Chavez turned around and it's gotten to be a little more subdued. Yeah. Well, he's getting three million for this one, as is Camacho. Oh, another right hand to right flush on the face of Camacho. It's in round 11. The bell sounds for round 12, the 12th and final round, as they touch gloves. And Camacho nearly went down. The rope saved him. Hit the deck. Whether it would have been a slip or a knockdown. Before punching to the body. I mean, he just never quits unless he's got that left hand in the body. Camacho took his beating like a man. He didn't back up. He tried. 
to come on, and he's just been out for. You can't. I don't think there's a fighter that's ever fought him that hasn't looked in the mirror for the rest of their life and remembered him very well. Yeah, very well. Watch your hair. Come on, show Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we have a unanimous decision. 120 to 107. All three in favor of the winner and still champion, Julio Cesar Chavez. Julio Cesar Chavez finds himself beating yet another Hall of Fame legend and broadening his undefeated record once more. Macho himself shows a tremendous amount of humility after taking such a beating and congratulates the better man for winning emphatically. I thought he was going to fight a sharper fight, but he brings, he did a lot of punches, he stood on me. I couldn't just keep him off. I kept him off, but he fought. What can I say? First time I fought a guy with that much courage that stood on me. Both Chavez and Camacho would accomplish much and more over the next few years of their career obtaining victory after victory and accumulating even more respect than they'd already had on this plentifully rewarding night. Most know the tale of the twilight years of Chavez's professional career, but as a soft recap for those in the dark, he sadly failed to reach the 100 club. He fell just short of 90 wins coming out of his bout with Frankie Randall, and that was already following a controversial and to some embarrassing draw to the perfectly crafted Pernell Whitaker just four months earlier. And despite his most famous late career fights being against the young Oscar De La Hoya, in which he lost both and showed an apparent deterioration of age, his legacy has been untouched. And he is forever a legend in the ring with a formidable resume, record, and list of accomplishments. Hector. Although being doubted after his performance against Chavez and taunted for being past his best, would rack up some of his most legendary wins before retiring 18 years later, being the man to send Sugar Ray Leonard's career with a knockout victory and achieving two career-defining successes over the great Roberto Duran too. Camacho would never become a champion again, but with victories like that under your belt, who needs a physical one to show for it? Sadly, Macho Camacho's private life would be filled with trials and tribulations that we at Boxing After Dark will not be going into out of respect for the great fighter. But with a heavy heart, we must mention that Hector sadly passed away in 2012 after some unknown assailant shot him whilst driving with friends in his home country of Puerto Rico, following a different attempt on his life by a shooter just a year prior. Hector was a magnificently well-deserved celebrity of Puerto Rico in and out of the ring throughout his life and continues to be rightfully remembered as a hero till this day. I like Batman, I love Superman and uh, Lone Ranger, or Zorro. You know, you put all those superheroes together, there's nobody like the Macho Man. We salute Hector Macho Camacho for his many outstanding achievements and the larger-than-life figure he was until the end.